welcome back everyone we are going to continue our discussion from the previous class in which we are going to extend the concept of shape function to shape vector and employ it for discrete structures okay and then see how to get the response okay so in today's class we are going to continue our discussion on generalized sdof system okay and just to recap basically what we said a generalized sdo system is a continuous system okay so let us take an example of a simply supported beam here which can be transferred to a single degree of freedom system okay so let us consider the spring mass representation okay with k equivalent and m equivalent and if there is a force that is being applied either a point load or it could be any general force okay let us say it is represented as kpxt so again i can write this as p equivalent okay so basically what we said a continuous system can be transferred to a single degree of freedom system using something that we said shape function and shape function is nothing but an assumed deflected shape of the continuous system okay and typically in this procedure we consider any approximate function that can represent its deflected shape so when i say deflected shape it can be okay any shape that represents the deflection under the applied load okay and then basically we derived the equation of motion and also the expressions for the k equivalent and equivalent and p equivalent utilizing the mass and the stiffness distribution as well as the assumed shape function okay and we said that this method is approximate okay and the accuracy of this method depends on the accuracy of the shape function that we are considering okay so the expression that we derived for m equivalent was let me just write down okay m of x times phi of x square times dx and integrated over the whole length of the element the structural element similarly k equivalent expression we derived as eix which is the flexure rigidity times double differentiation of the shape function this is square integrated over the, again the whole length okay and then we also define the expression for l equivalent which is nothing but 0 to l mx phi x time dx okay and basically using these equivalent parameters okay the equation of motion that i had derived was m equivalent times z double dot t the acceleration in terms of generalized coordinate z if you remember the total deformation we had written as phi x times z t where phi x represents the deflected shape or the shape function and zt is basically the time variation okay which we called as generalized chord so we got this okay so if i wanted i could include the damping term as well but remember as i said damping term typically we do not have an expression for the damping term because damping we get from experiment so we get the damping ratio and we convert it to get actually the c equivalent okay so let us first let us write down without damping here okay the expressions that we had was k equivalent times zt and that was equal to l equivalent times ug double dot t now this was the expression that we had derived for ground excitation okay or earthquake excitation in which basically the uj double dot was the acceleration of the ground now i can write i can divide the whole thing by m equivalent and i can write this expression as zt times omega n square zt equal to minus l equivalent times m equivalent 
ug double dot t and this term i can write down another factor which is gamma equivalent okay so that my expression or the equation of motion i can write it as this okay and now this was one this one for was for the undamped system okay for a damped system we get the zeta value from experiment and then i can utilize the same expressions that we had previously used for single degree of freedom system okay and write down this expression here Okay, and this is for damped system. Okay, so up to this point, we had derived our equation of motion. Okay, and basically our frequency omega n square is nothing but k equivalent by m equivalent, which I can substitute the expressions and I can find out the values. Okay, so I can write this as eix times pi x integrated over 0 to L and then I have the expression for m equivalent which is mx times pi x square dx okay so this makes our job a lot more easier this allow us basically this allows us to uh, analyze a continuous system without having to approximate is as a multi degree of freedom system okay so a continuous system can be reduced to a single degree of freedom system which we call generalized sdf system with the help of a shape function okay all right now the natural sequence of things once we get the equation of motion is to find out z of t okay after we have obtained z of t the question comes for this remember for a single degree of freedom system that we had considered okay a discrete system okay uh, only one degree of freedom so there was no x term here so wherever the degree of freedom was defined there we had defined our total deformations what i'm saying if we had considered this system okay in this case okay whatever the u value for this was actually okay at this location only now for a continuous system i know that u would be different at different location so this also okay poses the question what happens to the forces at different location so i know that my u is now a function of x and t okay so i would also have a different point what are the internal forces and moments okay so internal force and moment they call internal forces and moments and to do that again we are going to uh, utilize the same method that we have done so we are going to utilize something called equivalent static method in which okay so to get the internal forces okay so to get internal forces all right now this method basically allows us to find out to or to obtain the internal forces so in this uh, method what do we do actually let us consider okay that we have a beam and then there is a distributed load i don't know what is the variation of that now if you might if you might remember from your solid mechanics course okay that if you have a distributed system like that with only flexure rigidity eix then i can write down my omega x which is the applied load is equal to eix times u double dash x times okay so the differentiation of the whole expression so this is the applied force now equivalent to static method basically says that if we have if i have analyzed a system and i found out what is the value uxt okay or let us say at any time instance i have found out what is the ux the internal forces in the system can be found out by applying an external force okay 
which is equal to omega x here okay and the same displacement ux through the stiffness component of the structure okay so what it is saying and i can say so i'm only considering the stiffness component it means i'm doing a static analysis so there is no mass here so equivalent to static analysis there you do the dynamic analysis you find out the deformation at each and every point or it sorry each and every time instance once you find out then at that at any particular time instance you apply an external force and do the static analysis of the system okay to get the internal forces and this external force is nothing but it would be as a function of the stiffness component times the dynamic deformation okay which in this case basically this external force is this here okay now what i'm saying this omega x so you might have used the notation omega s i'm just going to say this is my fx so i'm going to apply this force external distributed force to my b and then i'm going to find out subject to this force what are the internal forces using static analysis no uh, now no need to do any dynamic analysis okay so uh, i can do that i can substitute the value of ux equal to phi x times xt okay so that i can write my f os let us say it is at any time instant so that i would write it as e phi x times phi double dash down again okay and i can take zt outside okay so this is the expression that i would be uh, using to get the external force so this is the external force that need to be applied okay now we can do some simple manipulation and we can see that the same expression can be converted to okay same expression can be converted to omega n square m of x times phi x times z t okay and it is more than more often this is like you know this is the expression that we would be using to get the external static or the equivalent static force to which the internal forces can be obtained at any time instance okay and the derivation from how to get from here to here can be found out okay anywhere remember to get this we are just going to utilize this expression that we have here and then also use the principle of virtual work such that the work done by the external force s t times del okay so i'm going to write down this times del ux times dx over the whole length it should be equal to work done by the internal forces which is due to the flexure flexure or let us say the moment here okay this is moment times curvature times dx okay and we can substitute and uh, uh, utilize this expression and we will get finally this expression here for equivalent static force okay once the sta equivalent static force is known other part are simple i can just apply this equivalent static force and get the internal forces now more often than not as we have previously discussed in earthquake analysis okay so remember this is the response that we are considering for ground vibration okay or uh, earthquake analysis okay so for earthquake analysis usually peak response is of most important one of the most important parameter okay so we consider mostly peak response and we know that peak response of any single degree of freedom system can be obtained using response spectra okay or design spectra depending upon what you have been provided or given so let us say this is the response spectra so that let us call this as pseudo acceleration and this as g similarly i would have displacement 
okay which would let us say look like something like this okay not g sorry this is a as units of g this is versus time period and this is d versus time period okay so remember these response spectra are basically response of any system okay of this type so if i write it okay remember these were drawn for let us say z double dot two zeta omega n z dot plus omega n square z and this is equal to minus u g of t so this is response spectra is basically correspond to this equation here okay and same for the deformation but remember the equation that we have for generalized studio system left hand side is same however in the right hand side i have a factor which is gamma equivalent okay now since we are considering linear system if i know the peak response of this system to get the peak response of this system i just need to multiply this with the factor gamma equivalent okay because my ground motion is now multiplied with this so the response would again be multiplied with this factor so the peak response would be multiplied with gamma equivalent so for this case the peak generalized displacement can be written as z not equal to gamma equivalent times d where d is the peak deformation okay which can be further written as if you write a if you write the d as pseudo acceleration divided by omega n square so this can be written as a divided by omega n square okay now remember once we have obtained the peak response then i can get the peak value of the displacement as u x t okay so you want to get the maximum of this one over time of course okay so this would be u x okay again the peak displacement would be function of x because the peak displacement would be different at different location in the structural element okay so this can be written as u not x equal to gamma equivalent times d times phi x okay basically all i am doing is writing down this one as phi x or instead of doing that let me just do this this would be equal to phi x times z naught and what is z naught here gamma equivalent times t so that i can write this as phi x okay times d okay so peak equivalent static force can be written as okay remember this is my unit so peak equivalent static force if you look at the expression here all i need to do is substitute z t equal to z naught and that would give me the peak value of the equivalent static force so let us write down that as mx phi x times z naught which can be written as gamma equivalent times mx times phi x times a okay because if you write z not equal to this expression here then omega n square omega n square cancels off and you get basically this expression that you have right here okay so subject to this we can find out the internal forces and the moment and let us see how do we do that so we are going to take the example of the cantilever okay the cantilever column that we had considered and in this case basically we had said that okay the equal the uh, inertial forces would look something like this f i as a function of x and t okay we had also said that okay for this case let us apply we want to find out the response of the system subject to this this is the equivalent static force this is zero at x equal to zero because phi x equal to zero 
okay now if i want to say find out what is my shear at any height y okay then let us see how do we do that or instead of saying at y uh, let us say i want to find out shear at any height x so to do that what will happen the shear at this point would be due to contribution of all the forces which are above this one so or the sum of all equivalent static forces which is above this one and this just comes from the free body diagram so shear at any point which is at height x let us say this is vx that i want to find out would be due to all the forces which is basically f not x above that location so to do that let us do one thing let us consider any small element which is at height of y okay and of differential height dy so this is not fx now let us say this is f not y okay so vx basically is integration from okay x okay first let us write down the expression sum of all the forces so it would be f not y all right and dy integrated over x to the total height let us say it is l or h or whatever you are considering so this gives you the uh, shear at any height location or whatever you want to say at distance x okay similarly the moment at this point okay so let us say this is the uh, direction this is the direction we are considering correct yeah so the moment let us say it is something like this okay or it would be an opposite direction here okay so mx again becomes similar okay so i can i'm going to utilize the same expression here x to l this would be moment of this force f dy and the lever arm would become y minus x so let me rearrange this expression this becomes y minus x times f naught y dy integrated from x to l okay so these two expression we utilize to get the basically forces and or the shear forces and moment at any height x okay now uh, the parameters that are of more important importance in this case are the base shear and the base moment which are typically used to find out what is the base shear of a structure in equivalent static method okay so in that case what i can do okay i can write down at the base vb all i need to do the lower limit is basically now becomes zero and this is f naught okay y and dy integrated over the whole height okay and you would see that i can write this expression okay in terms of if you uh, substitute uh, the expression for let us say f not y which is right here okay i can take or oh, let me first write down like this omega n square or let me use the second expression here so it is this times mx pi x or the integration variable here is y you know it doesn't matter really in this case okay, this, this need to be integrated now this is constant not a function of actually so i can write this as my pi y dy okay now if you remember this expression is nothing but l equivalent so I would write this expression as L equivalent times gamma equivalent times A. Okay, this is the expression for the base shear. Okay, similarly, base moment I can also write down MBO is equal to 0 to L. Okay, in this case, Y times F naught Y dy and again when i substitute this i would get this as 
okay some l equivalent dash a where l equivalent dash is actually 0 to l y m y i y t y or you can write in terms of x no? it doesn't actually matter so these expressions can be utilized to find out the base shear and base moment for any continuous system okay now remember that till now we have considered basically the ground shaking and we have derived the equation of motion for ground shaking however instead of the ground shaking if you have the external applied force which may be distributed or concentrated but let us say in general we write the external applied forces okay as distributed force p of x of t okay instead of the ground motion uj double dot t so in that case the same expression i can derive okay only thing is that i would have a p equivalent t terms which is nothing but in this case pxt times phi x times dx integrated over the whole length okay and that uh, you can uh, you know just uh, find out so in this case my p equivalent becomes whatever the force distribution that is given to you okay multiply with the shape function phi x and integrate over the whole length all right so this is instead of ground excitation if you have a force acting throughout the length of the uh, structural element then we can utilize this expression to find out and then further solve the system okay all right if this is clear then let us do an example because that would make this uh, discussion like you know put it in a perspective okay so what do we actually have here okay let us consider this okay we are going to consider the same problem of a cantilever basically uh, column here so let us do this example here okay so what do we have again a cantilever column which basically representing a chimney which is fixed at the bottom the total height is 200 meters okay and this is of hollow cylindrical shape of total or the external diameter equal to the external diameter equal to 16 meter the internal diameter or instead of internal diameter the thickness of the wall is given as 1 meter okay let me draw it uh, in a larger view so this whole diameter okay this whole diameter is actually uh, 16 meter however this thickness is 1 meters 1 meter so in so in that case the internal diameter would become actually 14 meters all right now additional information is given that for this case it is of concrete material of density that you can assume as 2400 kg per meter cube the modulus elastic modulus can be taken as 25000 mpa okay the damping can be assumed as 5% okay and it is given that the expression for sa by g or the spectral acceleration can be taken as 1.8 divided by the natural time period okay so i mean this is for any design spectra in which case okay this expression can be given or can be taken to find out the spectral acceleration for this problem okay so let us now solve the problem see in this type of problem the first step is always to 
determine what is the basically the section parameter and what is the modulus of rigidity, the flexure rigidity on all those things so that we can find out the solution. And then assume the shape function. Now, for this case, you can assume the shape function to be 1 minus cos pi x by 2L. And if you remember from the last class, if you assume this to be the shape function, okay, the expression for the frequency was coming out to be 3.66 divided by the total length, okay, times EI divided by the mass per unit length. Okay, so at this point of time, pause it and then take uh, 10 15 minutes to solve this problem. Okay, all right, let us discuss this problem. Okay, so let us go step by step. The total length is given as 200 meters. Okay, now remember, we need to find out what is the mass per unit length. So, we need to find out what is the mass per unit length. You also need to find out the inertia. So, these two parameters need to be found out to determine the value of omega n so that I can find out Tn because once I get the Tn, then I can find out what is the spectral acceleration. Okay, so let us do that. Let us find out mass per unit length would be nothing but whatever the density of the concrete times the area, not the volume. I consider area, multiply it with the density of the concrete, it would give me mass per unit length. Now, in this case, density is 2400 kg per meter cube, and the area would become pi by 4 times 16 square minus 14 square. Okay, and this gives me basically the mass per unit length as 113, okay, times. 100 kg per meter all right now moment of inertia of a hollow cylinder okay is basically pi by 64 d2 to the power 4 and d1 to the power 4 okay so it would be pi by 64 times 16 to the power 4 minus 14 to the power 4 and this you can find out comes out to be 1331 1 meter 4. Okay, so the flexure rigidity, which is EI, can be found out as 25,000 MPA, and I can convert MPA to Newton per meter square as 10 to the power 6 Newton per meter square times 1331 1 meter 4. Okay, or let us first omit this. And this comes out to be approximately as 3.33 times 10 to the power 11 Newton per meter square, uh, sorry, Newton meter square. Okay, so let us now find out what is omega n, which is 3.66 times L square EI by, okay, EI by M. So I can substitute all these values and I can get the value of omega n is 1.57 radian per second. So, the time period can be easily determined as 2 pi by omega n, which comes out to be as 4 seconds. Okay, now I know that for 4 seconds, my pseudo acceleration is 1.8 divided by 4. Okay, and what is also given in this problem? that we need to find out the response of the system of a response spectra for which this is the spectral acceleration but is scaled to a PGA of 0.05. So, in that case I need to multiply this with 0.05 and this times g would be my acceleration. Okay. And if I substitute that, then I get this as 0 0.112 times g. Okay. Now I know that my displacement is nothing but pseudo acceleration divided by omega n square. Okay. And if I substitute that, I get this as 
six centimeter. Okay, so that z naught would be equal to comma equivalent times d. So I also need to find out gamma equivalent here, which is L equivalent times M equivalent. And if you remember from the previous classes, okay, I can get either directly by integrating, let us say, uh, L equivalent as um, whatever the mass times phi x times dx and M equivalent. Okay, and you can substitute all those values and we can see that you will get this one is approximately equal to 1.6. So that your Z0 becomes 1.6 times D which is 44.6 centimeter and this one comes out to be approximately at 71.5 centimeters. Okay, and the peak displacement now. So this is the general peak value of the generalized coordinate. Okay, so my actual displacement which represents the deformation as a function of location or x can be found out as phi x times z naught. Okay, now phi x I have assumed as 1 minus cos phi x by 12 times 71.5 centimeters. Okay. So basically, or I mean, you can write it like, you know, 71.5 first and this is 12 centimeters. Now, once we have that, I can find out what are the equivalent to static forces as F naught X equal to, in this case, I can directly write this as comma equivalent. Okay times mx times phi x times a and I can substitute remember mx is nothing but a constant value of mass per unit length phi x is 1 minus phi x by 12 a is 0 0.112 times g and gamma equivalent is basically 1.6 so let me write 1.6 times 13 100 times 1 minus cos phi x by 12 times 0 0.112 times g and if I write it in terms of kilonewton per meter this would be 200 1 minus cos phi x by 12 times kilo or this expression kilonewton per meter. Now the base shear could easily be calculated using the expression that we have previously derived as gamma equivalent times L equivalent times A. Now gamma equivalent I have only already found out as 1.6. Uh, L equivalent I can find out from the previous classes 0.363 times the mass per unit length times L and the acceleration is 0 0.112 times G which comes out to be approximately as 0 0.06 5 mlg which I when I substitute gives me 14,500 kilonewtons. Okay, so using this example, basically this example demonstrate how to employ the generalized STOF procedure of analysis to find out the response of a continuous system using the similar methods that we have used previously for a single degree of freedom system. Okay. All right. So, this gives the idea of how to analyze continuous system. Now, we are going to uh, discuss another type of a specialized system, which is basically a lumped mass system. So, this is not a continuous system. However, this is a lumped mass system, okay, and especially we are going to consider shear type building. Okay, so first I need to define what is a shear type building. Okay, now if I consider any building representation, so let me consider a three story building here. Okay, I have this building here. Now, this building has beam and columns. Okay, and 
we typically assume that all the masses are actually concentrated at the floor levels. Now for this, if I consider that the axial deformation can be neglected, okay, and at the floor level, the beam is actually in combination with the slab. So I can, if I assume that the flexure deformation in the beam can be neglected, then, so the second assumption is that flexure deformation of beams are neglected. So first you try to understand what those assumptions mean. If you consider any column or any beam, okay, like this, if you apply axial force, the displacement is actually very small because the axial stiffness is very high. However, if you apply a lateral force, then you are relatively, it takes you a smaller force to actually generate some finite displacement. Okay, so in this case, we are doing the same thing. We are saying that for the shear type building, I'm not going to consider any actual deformation in the beam or column. Okay, and I'm not going to consider any flexure deformation in the beam. So if you remember, in general, okay, in general, a 2D system at any node would have 3 degree of freedom, right? This you might remember from your structural mechanics class. Now, if I say that the actual deformation of the beam and columns are neglected, this system basically reduces to this. Remember, there are no actual deformation. So, this and this can be removed because there is no vertical deformation due to a column in the column. Okay. And there is no actual deformation in the beam. Then deformation at this point and at this point would be same. So, I can write down a single degree of freedom system to represent the horizontal deformation. I still have these two deformation, okay, which is basically the fracture deformation or the deformation along the fracture degree of freedom at these two nodes. But if I assume that the fracture deformation of the beams can be neglected, which is a reasonable assumption if you consider a fixed fixed column of a structure in which you have slab at each floor level so that the beams are connected to the slab and it provides us, okay, very high rigidity to the beam then these flexure deformations can be neglected so i have at or this is a single story let because we had considered a single story for each story i have only one degree of freedom so in this case okay a shear type building can be represented using the horizontal deformation in the shear direction at each level okay so for example this shear type building okay i would have only three degree of freedom to represent the horizontal deformation at three stories that we have considered here okay now the question is okay we are going to learn about multi degree of freedom system later using exact finding out exact deflected shape and doing all sort of analysis however my question is is there a way that which i can analyze this multi degree of freedom system okay using methods of single degree of freedom system okay so i'm going to employ the same method that i did for continuous system if somehow i can predict how does this deflected shape look like okay then i'm going to or i would be able to reduce this system to a single degree of freedom system with k equivalent and m equivalent and then again I can do my job. So again, this is also an approximate method. So I'm analyzing a multi-degree of freedom system or a multi-story building using single degree of freedom system. Okay. And the precursor for this one here is that we need to assume the deflected shape. Okay. Now, in this case, it is not called a shape. Okay, it is actually called a vector. Okay. Because in this case, what do we do actually? Okay, in this case, we represent, let us say, if I have a building initially at this position, and then let us say it is deflected like this, and the degrees of freedom are defined at these level. Okay, so somehow, if I am able to represent 
what is the shape represented by these degrees of freedom then i would be able to find out my shape vector okay so to do that let us say at any degree of freedom j i can write down my deformation coordinate okay ujt as pi j times zt where j is the degree of freedom that i'm considering okay so for in this case remember when we had a cantilever beam i had represented this deflected shape phi x as different different shape functions okay one of them was 1 minus cos phi x by 2l in this case what i'm going to do i'm going to represent a shape vector which basically represents let us say if it's a straight line i would say this is 1 okay this is 2 by 3 this is 1 by 3 so phi i can write it as if this is 1 by 3 2 by 3 and 1 something like that and then the, this represents the shape which basically says that this different coordinate although they would vary in time okay however at any time instant they would always be in this proportion represented by this shape vector here okay and the total deformation u at any time instance okay can be written as vector so again this would be vector phi times zt which is zt is just one value okay so this is somewhat similar to what we have already done so i'm not going to repeat the whole derivation i'm just going to write down the final expression okay i'm going to write down the final expression for the mass equivalent and the uh, k equivalent okay now remember for shear type building if i consider this okay we represent story stiffness as kj at jth story let us say sum of stiffnesses of all the columns at that particular story the jth story okay and if it's a shear type building i can simply write this one as summation 12 ei by h cube over all the columns okay and we utilize this and the story shear in that particular story can be written as vj equal to kj times the relative deformation so what i'm saying let us say at any particular story jth story okay this the relative or, or instead of doing this let us just do this okay again let us uh, draw multi-degree of freedom system so at any story let us say the shear force in that particular story would be the story stiffness let us say this is kj times the relative deformation okay so if this is let us say j minus 1 and this is uj okay the drift story drift is defined as delta j is equal to uj minus uj minus 1 so the deformation of the floor above and below or the floors that constitute that particular story this would be equal to del j which is uj and uj minus 1 okay and remember this expression here okay this in terms of element this expression can be written as ujt is equal to phi j times zt okay so like the derivation we had done for continuous system using the principle of virtual work i can again derive the similar expression however in this case what i'm going to write down just the final expression so m equivalent comes out to be now there is a summation term because it's a discretized system not a continuous system okay this comes out to be z equal to 1 to n okay where j is basically the degree of freedom okay so mj phi j square okay and then similarly i can write down okay i can write down the expression for kj which or sorry k equivalent which comes out to be j 
जे इक्वल टू वन टू एन के जे फाइव जे माइनस फाइव जे माइनस वन होल स्क्वायर एन एल इक्वेलेंट एस समेशन जे वन टू एन ओके एम जे फाइव जे ऑल राइट सो लाइक कंटिन्यूअस सिस्टम we can utilize this expression for a lumped mass system like a shear building to find out the response and the all i need to do is assume the deflected shape i can assume to be a straight line i can assume it to be parabola but in each case i would represent the deformation at particular degree of freedom in terms of a vector this is the only difference between a lumped mass discretized system with the continuous system okay and this would become more clear when we do one example so uh, let us let us consider okay in this case a five story uh, building okay in which i am assuming that at each level the mass is same so 1 2 3 4 5 and this one becomes 5 okay 1 2 3 4 5 all these masses are m actually and all these story stiffnesses are k okay and let us say we assume that it actually deflects linearly so that if i assume that the topmost coordinate is 1 then this would be 5 4 by 5 uh, this would be 3 by 5 and then 2 by 5 and then 1 by 5 so that i can write down my shape vector as 1 by 5 2 by 5 3 by 5 4 by 5 and then 1 which is basically 5 by 5 okay so my mass equivalent would become okay so my mass equivalent would become nothing but mj which is m for all the system and then this square so m times 1 square plus m times 1 by or uh, sorry 4 by 5 square okay then m times 3 by 5 square and so on up to m times 1 by 5 square and once i substitute these values okay i get final mass equivalent mass is 11 m by 5 similarly k equivalent okay you can write it as k at each level times first let me just write down that expression because this would be j equal to 1 to 5 okay and then this is kj times 5j and 5j minus 1 square okay so this would be k 1 minus 4 by 5 square plus k 4 by 5 minus 3 by 5 square Plus k, three by five minus two by five square, and so on. Two by five minus one by five square. Okay, we can simplify that, and we see that our the k that we get is actually k by five. Okay, and similarly we can find out the L equivalent as well. Okay, which is basically. uh in this case uh, i would get as mj times ij j equal to 1 to 5 and you can substitute the value and this would basically come out as 3m okay so we have seen that by assuming the deflected shape vector i have been able to reduce this system to a single degree of freedom system in which it can be represented as k equivalent and m equivalent where k equivalent and m equivalent have been derived like this and the equation of motion would become okay in this case uh z double dot plus omega n square which i can easily find out okay omega n is nothing but in this case k equivalent divided by m equivalent under root so this plus z equal to minus l equivalent Divided by m equivalent, okay, times u g t if there is a ground acceleration. Okay, 
remember omega n equivalent is nothing but k by 5 divided by 11 m by 5 which comes out to be 0.3 times k by m okay so we have seen that we solved continuous system and we saw uh, we solved lumped mass multi degree of freedom system a uh, shear type building as well without having to solve a multi degree of freedom system so this is the power of a generalized system okay by utilizing or assuming a deflected shape or a shape function or a shape vector for a discretized uh, okay in subsequent classes we are going to see how to solve a multi degree of freedom system without any approximations so without assuming that what is the deflected shape will look like we would be actually able to find out what would be the deflected shape actually looks like okay and we will do that in subsequent classes okay all right with that uh, i would like to conclude this class okay thank you very much Thank you.